We talked about national adaptation plans, the countries who have put them together and the various uh, actions, priorities, strategizing, etc. needed, issues of finance and so on to make the national adaptation plan effective. This is about guidelines for integrating ecosystem-based adaptation into national adaptation plans. Uh, this is a supplement to the NAP technical guidelines which we partly looked at. I'm going to be very brief just because this is uh, an important part. We have talked about nature-based solutions elsewhere to climate change in terms of basically reducing uh, emissions so it's more of a mitigation but it, many of those serve as adaptation as well or at least have co-benefits co in adaptation. So key messages from chapter one. I will read all the key messages like this and again be very brief but the report is online you can obviously download and read it. These supplementary guidelines are intended to guide and motivate countries to adopt ecosystem based approaches to adaptation which is somewhat similar to nature-based solutions and ecosystem based is also a terminology that's used for example in managing uh, fisheries where instead of catching just one fish like a tuna which then if you catch all the tuna the fish that uh, were eaten by tuna begin to grow more and more because the predation pressure is gone and then they begin to have other consequences and this is often called fishing down the food web by Daniel Pauly and colleagues so here it's slightly different but still a uh, very similar idea that you treat the system as one and use, use ecosystem as a part of the adaptation solution. As reinforced in the 2020 adaptation gap report uh, ecosystem-based adaptation should be a key component of all national climate change adaptation strategies and national adaptation plans including nationally determined contributions to the Paris Agreement. So if you use ecosystems wisely uh, you can adapt as well as sequester additional carbon and make them part or part of your nationally determined contributions or NDCs. As noted in the 2020 emissions gap report, currently the NDC mitigation commitments are not ambitious enough, creating ever greater urgency for climate change adaptation. So these uh, gap reports basically look at where we should be in terms of adaptation or emissions reductions and look at the uh, differential in terms of where we are instead of where we should be and also look at where we are headed in, in, instead of where we should be to meet some of the net zero or global warming targets like 1.5 C and 2 C and so on. Okay, To achieve, I have podcasts on the adaptation gap and emissions gaps elsewhere. To achieve climate change objectives, ecosystem-based uh, adaptation is a nature-based solution. That's the terminology I just mentioned and I have separate podcasts on that. So nature-based solution that protects, sustainably manages and restores natural or modified ecosystems. So ecosystems. So presumably you could have uh, ecosystems artificially grown uh, or afforestation on land, blue carbon along coastal uh, waters to sequester additional carbon and so on. Under the Cancun adaptation framework, NAPs were introduced to identify adaptation needs and develop action plans to address those needs. The NAP process entails three stages, formulation, implementation and review. The Paris Agreement recognizes the protection of the integrity of ecosystems and biodiversity for both climate change mitigation and adaptation action, so they have overlap there. Accordingly, there is a strong global agreement on the importance of NAPs and, ecosystem ba and EBA and the need to integrate them to uh, you know, make EBAs an uh, integral part of a NAP. So just run through a few uh, of the key uh, messages. Nature-based solutions and sustainable development. So we have here green infrastructure, blue infrastructure, forest restoration and uh, revegetation, wetland restoration, climate smart agriculture and agroforestry. We've talked about this under the nature-based solutions in Drawdown and elsewhere. Urban greening, we just talked about urban resilience and greening. Sustainable uh, land management, we talked about planning land management 
for adaptation, integrated water resource management, integrated coastal zone management, and protected areas. So you have here nature-based nature solutions for disaster risk reduction, climate adaptation, climate mitigation, environmental management, so you get sustainable development on this side. So it's just a schematic. So you have all these uh, nature-based solutions fitting in here with sustainable so uh, development covering land, water, coast, biodiversity and of course carbon sequestration as well which in the interior are labeled as ecosystem based approaches. Okay, the role of ecosystems in climate change adaptation and mitigation another uh, schematic but still quite instructive reforestation, forest creation in unsuitable areas or degraded lands uh, river restoration, wetland restoration, protection and expansion of natural and semi-natural areas, increased connectivity, species translocation as adaptation, uh, like corals for example, natural fire regime restoration, and you have positive impacts and negative impacts uh, in terms of the activities here. So climate change is sitting here affecting people, people and ecosystems are interacting with each other, so adaptation for biodiversity would go in this direction with these sorts sorts of activities that are listed here. An ecosystem-based adaptation would go in this direction with some commonalities between biodiversity uh, protection and restoration versus ecosystem-based adaptation. So you can see the biodiversity protection and restoration will have co-benefits in terms of ecosystem-based adaptation. And ecosystem-based mitigation, of course, where you are reducing carbon dioxide emissions or sequestering additional carbon by using ecosystems in the climate change adaptation and mitigation. Uh, Nature-based solutions with multiple benefits. Again, I'll just kind of run through, not go into the detail. So examples of NBS include protecting, restoring coastal habitats like mangroves, salt marshes, coral leaves and oyster beds. So obviously they will have protection against uh, habitat loss, uh, storm surge, erosions, uh, nutrient uh, filtering and so on, protecting and restoring upland forests, creating parks and open green space, obviously lots of health benefits, well-being, etc. The associated ecosystem services here, uh, coastal protection, reduction in riverine flood impacts, reduction in urban flood impacts, filtering pollution, carbon sequestration, habitat creation, heat mitigation, recreational opportunities. Okay. So all sound intuitive and yet managing them or keeping them alive and paying for them can all be tricky as well. Hierarchical concepts of natural capital. So ecosystem based solutions which uh, also have a natural capital. How do you put a, a value on them? That's always been uh, uh, you know, interesting in the sense people estimate the uh, natural capital and then uh, to actually get people to value it at that level is not always easy. So here we are with green infrastructure uh, also counting as nature-based solution, ecosystem-based ecosystem adaptation, uh, feeding the nature-based solutions and together forming natural capital. So planetary resources such as plants, animals, air, water, soils and minerals that sustain life and well-being. Those are natural capital that I won't read the details here. An umbrella term referring uh, to actions that protect, manage and restore natural capital in ways that address societal challenges effectively and adaptively. Okay. The use of biodiversity and ecosystem services as part of an overall adaptation strategy to help people to adapt to the adverse effect of climate change. It aims to maintain and increase the resilience and reduce vulnerability of ecosystems and people in the face of uh, the adverse Im uh, effects of climate change and of course ecosystem-based adaptation is most appropriately integrated into broader adaptation and development strategies as well. A subset of nature-based solutions that intentionally and strategically preserves, enhances or restores elements of natural system to help reduce a higher quality 
uh, more resilient and lower cost infrastructure services. Infrastructure service uh, providers can integrate green infrastructure into built systems as well. This is how you would uh, protect natural capital and even grow it. Uh, national adaptation plan process which we looked at elsewhere before. So you have uh, various levels of governance, cabinet, senate, parliament depending on the country, national coordinating body, ministries that are involved, the public, civil society and private sector are uh, stakeholders and co-beneficiaries and co-production happens with these uh, particip engagement of these groups. So create a mandate for NAP, allocate budget changes to regulatory and fiscal framework which we have looked at uh, already through the IMF staff notes and so on. Develop the NAP with feedback from uh, various from below and from above as a mandate. Develop uh, so here inputs to the NAP and uh, uh, coming from uh, below we'll see the next uh, uh, schematic next inputs to sectoral strategies behaviors and investment decisions so develop update sectoral NAP strategies implement and monitor sectoral NAP strategies review the NAP strategies so this is a loop uh, that has to be iterated to finalize NAP be flexible as we have talked about be risk informed make room uh, in the budget for uh, keeping this going prioritizing index based metrics that uh, analysis that we looked at for prioritizing and of course uh, the fiscal framework and regulatory frameworks needed to make them a reality and so on interactions between national adaptation plans nationally determined contributions and sectoral plans how does it work you have formulation implementation and review going through their loops but let's look here first you have NAP with its formulation implementation and review NDCs with their formulation implementation and review and they have feedbacks with each other then you have sectoral plans and policies which have formulation implementation and review so each one feeds back and you have a holistic synergistic approach to all and so here formulation objective setting scientific evidence assessment consultation with stakeholders and sectors and implementation has to involve engaging sectors and stakeholders building capacity and tracking progress uh, review should uh, evaluate performance, review and update evidence base, validate progress, reassessing a policy and planning a landscape, uh, sorry, policy and planning landscape and budget allocation. Again, these are quite general in terms of the uh, bullet points here, but making them a reality is very critical especially for the most vulnerable of uh, the countries like the small island developing states and poor countries uh, and so on connection between global agendas how do uh, the national adaptation plans end up being a global agenda to serve the global needs in terms of let's say global warming targets of 1.5 degrees C and 2 degrees C by 2100. Here we'll start with the shorter time uh, agenda. 2030 agenda for sustainable development is right around the corner. So it has Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction including targets related to disaster risk reduction and references uh, Sendai framework in terms of the 2030 sustainable development which feeds back to the 2030 agenda. It also talks to uh, recognizing climate change as a driver uh, of disaster risk f under the Paris Agreement UNFCC. So there are direct uh, references and there are thematic linkages when you have dashed lines. So the 2030 agenda of course is uh, got direct and thematic linkages to the Paris Agreement which feeds back to the 2030 agenda. So recognizing close linkages between climate action and sustainable development is very important. We've talked about this elsewhere where adaptation and mitigation can be independently uh, designed and we sh they should be actually synergistic and they should both be synergistic with the uh, progress of sustainable development goals as well. Note that the disaster reduction uh, 
risk reduction is essential for sustainable development as well okay so again a schematic but very important for uh, advancing global as well as local agendas on adaptation especially in this context integrating eco ecosystem based adaptation into the national adaptation plans so that's chapter one we'll come back and look at key messages from chapter two which is on ecosystems ecosystem services and ecosystem based adaptation okay let's leave this here and uh, come back